Sometimes we watch our heroes perform tremendous acts of bravery right in front of our eyes. And we ask ourselves, if it came down to it, could I do that? Could I climb the stairs of a burning building to rescue a kitten? Could I jump off a bridge to save a brave Samaritan who had just fallen into the river below? If a distillery caught fire and the barrels of whiskey exploded, spilling their contents into the streets of my beloved town, would I risk my life to drink that whiskey, even if it had just been on fire? That last one may sound preposterous, but sometimes truth is stranger than fiction. In 1875, a distillery in Dublin did exactly that, destroying 35 homes and killing 13 people. But none of the 13 people died from the fire itself or from smoke inhalation. They all died from drinking the whiskey flowing through the streets. Come check out the wildest historic event I've ever heard about, up next on Fact Bites. And while you're enjoying a glass of non-flaming whiskey from your cabinet, take a moment to like and subscribe. On the historic night of June 18, 1875, in Dublin, Ireland, at about half past 8 p.m., a fire broke out in Reed's Malt House and Malone's Bonded Warehouse in the Liberties, a neighborhood in Dublin. A malt house is where they malt the cereal grains used to make whiskey, and a bonded warehouse is a duty-free place where you can store things. In this case, Malone's Bonded Warehouse was housing barrels of whiskey from distillers and importers, many of the distillers being in Dublin, about 5,000 hogsheads, which is about 315,000 US gallons. The warehouse was housing mostly whiskey, but contained some other spirits like brandy and even wine. There were even some Jameson barrels being housed, and some Irish whiskeys that are no longer around, such as Rose and the Greenmont. Now, bear in mind, these aren't 90 proof, ready to drink barrels of whiskey. No, these haven't been watered down or filtered yet, so these are high alcohol content barrels. It's uncertain how the initial fire broke out, but as expected, the entire warehouse was completely engulfed in flames in a very short amount of time. As a result of this, the 5,000 barrels of whiskey began exploding, spilling their contents everywhere. This caused an event that most people will never bear witness to in their entire lifetime. A flaming river of whiskey began flowing through the heavily populated town. The flames from the stream of whiskey rose 20 to 30 feet as it rushed along the road. Now, there were a lot of pigs being housed in Dublin at the time, and it is said that the maddened, squealing pigs running amok through the streets did an excellent job of alerting anyone still inside their house to evacuate. At one point, the fire was headed straight for the Carmelite Convent and the Coombe Maternity Hospital, but a timely gust of wind blew the fire in a different direction and saved everyone in those buildings. The townspeople did a great job of evacuating their buildings quickly, for which the concerned fire captain was graciously thankful. The fire captain was so concerned because by the time the fire brigade got there, there really wasn't that much that they could do to the fire. They quickly decided that they couldn't extinguish the flames with water because it would simply make matters worse. They quickly realized that water only carried the flaming river further down the road, creating more destruction in its path, as would be the case with any liquid they caught on fire. A few of the townspeople accused the fire team of doing nothing while their houses and valuable possessions... Did they have valuable possessions back then? burnt to the ground, but they were quickly reassured that it was the safest option to do nothing because they didn't want to spray it with water and push the fire into the sewers, which would have done a lot more damage to the town. The fire raged on for hours. The Irish examiner recounts that the fire speedily demolished the entire row of small houses forming the south side of that thoroughfare. Cork Street, R.D. Street, Chambers Street, and Mill Street were now each the site of vast burnings, while every now and then there was a fresh explosion in the bonded stores, like the sound of artillery, telling that fresh fuel had been added to the blaze. In fact, one of the houses in the path of the fire was hosting a wake, and they had to remove the dead body from the house so that the wake didn't become a cremation. Now for the most unbelievable part of the story. I'll give you another quote from the paper. It should be mentioned that in some of the narrow by streets through which much of the liquor from the stores ran, many of the crowd indulged to excess, drinking in some instances out of their shoes and hats in which they had collected the whiskey. Hey, look, I'm not judging. Every house on your street just burned down and now you have this fantastic opportunity to drink a glass of high proof, warm Jameson Irish whiskey? I'm pulling the boot off and hitting a shoey there too. 
Sadly, moderation still applies. 13 brave townspeople perished that night, not from the flames, not from smoke inhalation, but from alcohol poisoning due to drinking copious amounts of whiskey that was flowing through the streets. And probably not the best whiskey either. Remember, this was whiskey that had been flowing through the street, through dirt, through horse manure, mixed in with fire hose water. Not exactly top shelf. A tip of the cap to those brave townspeople. Ultimately, the flames did extinguish. The fire team tried to use sand and other debris to block the flaming whiskey river from flowing further down the street, but it kept getting through. At about 11 p.m., they had a rather ingenious idea. Dublin's main method of transportation was horse-drawn carriage, and where there are horses, there's horse manure. This manure would be stored in depots before being sold off to farmers to use as fertilizer. They ordered one of the depots to bring as much horse manure as they had, and they used it as dams that would ultimately stop the fire. At 1 a.m., the flaming river was no more, and they could start using water to put out any remaining building fires. And at 4 a.m., the fire had been completely extinguished. 35 houses were left destroyed, along with the warehouse and the malt house, and 13 people were left dead, but none of them were due to the actual flames. And there you have it, the Dublin Whiskey Fire. If a flaming river of whiskey emerged at your feet, would you drink from it like I would? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.